Hi everyone, it's Rhiannon here and I'm here to talk to you about another excellent book. So the book I want to talk about today is on our Waterstones Book of the Year shortlist and that is House Without Windows by Barbara Newhall Follett. So this is one of the strangest books I've ever read and what makes it even more strange is the story surrounding it. So The House Without Windows was actually published in 1927 um, and Barbara was only 12 years old when she wrote it, which already is just incredible. And it was a complete bestseller, ran out of its print run when it was published. She then wrote another book a couple of years later, but then when she was 24, she just disappeared and no one's ever heard from her since. Um, and then because of that, her book just kind of fell into obscurity. And then Jackie Morris, who is a beautiful illustrator, she illustrated um, The Lost Words which was out a couple of years ago. She rediscovered this book and she pushed for it to be republished um, and then included some of her gorgeous illustrations with it. Um, I wish I could show you a copy but um, I lent mine to a friend as is always the way with, <laughs> with my books. So something that uh, Jackie Morris says in the introduction of this book is that she doesn't want you to think about the mystery of what happened to Barbara and why did she disappear when she was 24. She wants you to think about Barbara as a 12 year old full of imagination and wonder writing this book and I kind of agree with that. Um, I think it's kind of pointless to debate over where she went and it's much more pleasing and satisfying to just examine the words that she wrote. So the premise of this book is there's a little girl called Eposip and uh, she lives in America with her parents uh, in a kind of wooded area and one day she just decides to cast everything off and just run away. She suddenly hates the idea of living in a house, she hates being stifled and she just wants to be in nature. And the first half of the book is her just becoming slowly used to nature and then her parents are trying to get her back so they keep trying to like set traps for her and everyone in the village does and then the second half just kind of moves away from that entirely and Eposip just becomes a kind of nomad just traveling wherever she feels like and following nature so uh, a large portion of the book takes place in this beautiful meadow and then in the mountains and then she finally discovers the sea and absolutely loves it. It feels so unique because it's not so much a oh this big action happens and then there's a mystery and you've got to run away. It's just more kind of rumination on nature and how beautiful nature can be and you see it through the eyes of Eposip which is beautiful but then also through the eyes of Barbara. I think there's something quite rare and unique about seeing the world through the eyes of a child that we don't really get to experience that much. The language used in this book is absolutely breathtaking. There are entire passages that I just want to read over and over again because the way Barbara describes nature is just so immersive and wonderful and like I said before with that like childlike wonder to it, you know she doesn't know what the sea is so she's like kind of curious of it but then like immediately falls in love with it and teaches herself to swim and there's like a little bit of magic in the book in that you know, food and warmth and like safety and never really a concern of Eposip. We never feel like she's in danger except from the adults who want to take her back to confine her in a house. But she's very practical, you know, she like makes her clothes out of leaves and just eats berries and it's kind of like, I don't know if you ever wanted to run away when you were younger but it feels like that, like oh yeah I'll just run away and I'll just live on berries and no, no harm will ever come to me and you know that's the kind of thing you think when you're a child um, but what's so nice about this book is, is Eposip does it and she's never forced to go back to the house, she's never taken away from the thing that she loves which is nature. Jackie Morris says in her introduction that Eposip is kind of a Peter Pan like figure which I definitely agree with um, but another thing that Morris says is that Whereas you got the sense that Peter was stuck and kind of regressing and, you know, he refused to grow up. Eposip is a lot more rational and calm about it and she doesn't really inflict her life on others. She doesn't, she's not desperately trying to surround herself with young people all the time to keep herself young. She's just very content in being herself. I think this is the kind of novel to just savour as you read it and not, you know, rush through to get to the end because like I said, the descriptions and the language are beautiful. Every time as I was reading it, I would come out of it and just be like, but the author was 12, how did she write this? Like, honestly, it's better than a lot of adult written books that I've read. She was a genius. She had just this incredible command of language um, and no fear to sort of revel in description. I think this is definitely a book to be enjoyed by adults and children. It's kind of a bit Mark Twainy. it's a little bit like uh, Tuck Everlasting by Natalie Babbitt, it's just 
one of those novels that stays with you after you've read it and one you have to read in nature. I think I started it on a beach and finished it in a park and that's just like the perfect way to read it because you kind of get a newfound appreciation for the world around us which I think is you know vitally important right now that we take extra care on, on this beautiful planet that we live on and I was so so pleased to see it had made the shortlist for the Waterstones book of the year because it's really unique and books like this don't come along every day so when you find one like this it's so important to treasure it because it feels so special. Thanks for watching everybody, I hope you enjoyed today's video, um, if you've read the book I'd love to hear your thoughts or if you've read anything similar I'm always looking for recommendations.